My name is Natalie Hummel and I'm the Extension Entomologist for Louisiana State University Agricultural Center that works with the fruits and nuts and also rice crops. And what I'd like to do today is to demonstrate how um, a county agent or a homeowner could scout for the Asian citrus psyllid on your trees if you're suspicious that your tree might have this problem. This is a really good example of what you'd be looking for. Here we have a plant that has a lot of new flush on it. This flush is very attractive to the Asian citrus psyllid. And uh, what the adults will do is they'll come in, begin feeding on this flush, and then they would begin laying eggs on this new flushing tissue. They will not lay eggs on older tissue on your tree such as this. So what you would do is you could look at this um, small flush area. This is a really good example of what you would see here. In this case, we have a whole bunch of nymphs. Um, they have a yellow color. They're kind of oval in shape, flat. And these ones are producing this wax um, excrement that they produce, so kind of a, a curly wax pattern. And this is really a distinct sign of this insect being present on your tree. So this would be what you'd look for here. The adults are, uh, kind of, have kind of brown and white mottled wings. They're a little bit bigger than the nymphs. I should point out here that these are about one to two millimeters in length. You can see the small size here. The adults are a little bit larger. They're two to three millimeters in length, and they're going to be sitting on the leaf at a 45 degree angle. If you do find any of these samples and you're not, and you think that you might have Asian citrus psyllid on your tree, then we encourage you to contact your parish extension office and request that the county agent um, come and look at your trees or you could directly contact Louisiana Department of Agriculture and Forestry and they could send an inspector to look at your trees for you to take a, an official sample. What we're doing right now is just trying to get the message out so that we can get the survey efforts underway and see the extent of spread of this new insect. One of the ma major problems with greening is detecting the, pa uh, the disease. A lot of times, in most cases, we can't really detect the pathogen until we see symptoms, and so it's really important to be able to diagnose the early symptoms of greening. The most common symptom early in disease development is a kind of a blotchy modeling of the leaves that doesn't really, it's, it's asymmetrical on the leaves, the pattern is not the same on both sides of the leaves, because later in disease development, a lot of what we see in terms of symptoms mimic nutrient deficiencies. And here's a good example of what we mean by a nutrient deficiency. And the pattern on the leaf, as you can see, is fairly similar on both sides of the leaf. It's almost like a mirror image. And a lot of times, these are the types of symptoms we will see later in disease development. Uh, but that's a tree that's been infected for quite a while. Although symptoms will vary depending upon what species of citrus we're dealing with and the environmental conditions. Following the development of the initial symptoms, what you'll see is a gradual decline in the health and vigor of the tree. The fruit will develop, but they'll stay smaller, and they won't color up normally. And so you'll end up with green splotches on normally colored tissues, and that's where we get the name greening. The other thing you'll notice is that uh, you'll get a lot of uh, fruit drop and defoliation and twig dieback associated with the, with the decline of the tree.